So this lecture segment will cover the largest animal phylum, which is phylum Arthropoda, and it includes a lot of beetles, two of which are shown here, and other organisms also fall into Arthropoda, but this is by far the largest phylum of the animal kingdom. So there are more than a million species of arthropods, and arthropods affect all aspects of human life, especially insects. The arthropods are divided into four major subphyla, and the names of these you do need to know, with examples, common names of animals that are in each of the subphyla. Chelicerata, Crustacea, Hexapoda, and Myriapoda. The trilobites, it was mentioned in an earlier chapter, trilobites appeared in the beginning of the Paleozoic, so it, as a result of the Cambrian explosion, and then went extinct at the end of the Paleozoic in the Permian extinction. But they have a segmented body style, which is one of the main characteristics of the arthropods. So the morphology of arthropods includes a segmented body. They at least have head, thorax, and abdomen. So at least three segments, and often they have more than that. The exoskeleton is made of chitin, and other proteins. It supports the body. It acts as a skeleton, but it's also a protection um, structure. And because their skeleton is on the outside, then they have to shed that skeleton, and that process is called ecdysis, which is molting. So sometimes you see, for example, cicadas leave their skeletons attached to outside surfaces, especially this time of year, you find those. Um, all arthropods have to shed their um, exoskeleton, although not all of them molt in exactly that way, but they, um, they have to grow a new, a new exoskeleton after they emerge from the one that's gotten too small. They also have jointed appendages, and that's the name arthropod means, jointed legs. Arthra, if you know the term arthritis, which means inflammation of the joints, the root arthra means joints. Pod or poda means foot, in this case appendages, so um, legs. So they have lots of appendages and the legs are jointed. The um, most important trait that evolved in the arthropods would have to be wings. The, that's an appendage, and a lot of the arthropods that are extant have wings. So wings was a major um, innovation, a major adaptation for this group. And they have, but they have also all other kinds of appendages um, that you can see in various arthropods. Some of them are mouth parts, some of them are antenna, legs, wings, gills in some of them. So lots of things hanging off of the animal and moving, and that's, I think, what creeps people out about the arthropods, are all these wiggling appendages. In terms of respiration, because this phylum is so big, you have a lot of variation from one group to the next in terms of what kind of respiratory system is present. Most of the marine arthropods that live in the water have gills of some type, which is just a very thin, highly vascularized structure for gas exchange. Some of the tiniest arthropods are so small that diffusion works well enough and they don't have any particular structure specifically for gas exchange. For the arthropods that live on land, they have these um, trachea and spiracles, 
which are fundamentally, these are like punch holes through, these little holes through the exoskeleton as if somebody almost took a pin and punched holes all the way through. And then on the inside, there's a little channel system where the gas can diffuse. And so there's no lung. So if you take an insect and you hold its little mouth shut, you won't suffocate him because he doesn't breathe through his mouth. He doesn't have lungs. He eats through his mouth, but these little holes punched throughout the body are where the oxygen can enter and move through the body in these little, this little tunnel system. And spiders have what are sometimes called book lungs. So um, there's a lot of variation in what kind of respiratory system you would find. So the biggest group of the arthropods is subphylum hexapoda. Hexa means six, poda means legs in this case, and so six legs. So these are all the insects. Now we looked at beetles. I mentioned that there's 250, 300,000 species of beetles, and, but there are other insects. As a rule, almost all insects have wings. Um, so this is where you see a huge diversity. The insects have a complete digestive system, including a mouth and anus. They have a thorax and an abdomen and a head. They have a brain, cerebral ganglia. They have a dorsal nerve cord. Um, and they have... Shown here in blue is this series of holes through the body and these little tunnels that go through the body where the gas would, would reach the innermost parts of the body. So they have all the basic systems, organ systems, that you can think of. Another subphylum are called the myriapoda. Myria is a word, the word myriad means a lot. So myriapoda means a lot of legs. In this group, you have the centipedes and the millipedes. Centipedes are carnivorous. Now, they don't eat humans, but they eat a lot of bugs in your house, and they do sting. They don't have 100 legs, but they have, I don't know, 30 legs, something like that. The millipede does not have a thousand legs, but it has more legs than the centipede. The millipede almost looks like something that could belong in phylum Annelida, the segmented worms, except when you watch him walk, he's walking on his legs. So he's not squirming through the soil. He's, he's walking on all of these legs that run underneath the body. Subphylum crustacea, this would be include things like shrimp, crab, lobster, krill, barnacles. And I have a little video of barnacles. They're really kind of horrifying. And they might almost remind you, because of the way they have this kind of a shell structure on some barnacles, you might mistake them for, um, I guess you could mistake them for like a clam kind of animal, but they're not. They're barnacles, and barnacles are crustaceans. So I'll show you a little video that I will link up in your lecture module. And then the chelicerata include things like scorpion, spider, all right, and horseshoe crab. So there are, and that's a misnomer because the horseshoe crab is not a true crab because true crabs belong in the crustaceans. But a horseshoe crab is actually a chelicerata, more closely related to a spider or a scorpion. The last phylum of the invertebrates that we're going to look at is phylum Echinodermata. Echinodermata is a deuterostome. And 
but it is also an invertebrate. So deuterostomes, you recall, have certain characteristics, such as the mouth forms second. They have um, radial cleavage in the early embryo. They have enterocele for the formation of their mesoderm. So these fall into the same broad group of deuterostomes that humans fall into as well. So phylum echinodermata, these are deuterostomes, but they are invertebrates. They don't have a backbone. They do have a kind of skeleton though, um, not a backbone per se, but a kind of skeleton that runs throughout the body. And it's shown in this white, in this image, it's these white structures. There's a ring in the center disc of the animal, and then these canals that run out are covered in plates that are rigid. So it gives it some skeletal structure. And the sea star is an example of an echinoderm. The characteristic of the phylum echinodermata that's most notable is called the water vascular system. So the animal has what we call a pentaradial body plan. It has these canals that extend down each arm, which are covered in the, in the skeletal material, but they are hollow on the inside and water comes through the top of the animal. And in this picture, it's, the skin has been cut away. So water comes in through this structure called the madreporite. It runs through these canals and it goes down the arms and then it fills up what are called tube feet. And the tube feet protrude out through the bottom of the animal and it's used in locomotion. It's also part of how they eat and get oxygen. But in this video, you'll see the locomotion issue um, happening in this video here using the water vascular system and the tube feet. The echinoderms are only found in ocean water, salt water. They have, like I said, pentaradial symmetry, but they are bilateral in the very early developmental stage called the larval stage. So for that reason, they're still classified as bilateral in terms of the evolutionary tree, but the adults are pentaradial. So that means they have five projections from a center point. Some of them are easy to see the pentaradial symmetry. Some of them it's much harder to see. And you have to be looking at the animal from a certain angle to see that. But the common animals that fall into the echinodermata are the sea star, the brittle star, the sea urchin. Um, I don't have a picture of the sand dollar. Um, this is a sea cucumber and this is a sea fan. Sea cucumber has the tube feet running along the bottom of the animal and it does extend and, and retract them to move in a similar way as the sea star that you see in the video that I will link up. So the echinoderms are interesting. They all have that water vascular system.